my beautiful friends. I was actually going to introduce you to another member of the family, Butterball, our cat, our Russian blue. But he took off this morning. I went downstairs, I tried to find him, but he decided, no, I'm not part of this today. So Bob took his place. So Bob came in and said hello to everybody here. But uh, what we want to talk about today is toxic relationships and how to get rid of the toxic relationship. We're going to dig very deep. We're going to go um, so deep to find these answers because the answers oftentimes in my experience are not simple and might surprise you even. Even if there's a toxic relationship that um, you have carried on in many, many lifetimes and you've gotten rid of the person in your current life, you've said, now that's it, I'm moving on, I'm divorcing, I'm leaving. That doesn't mean that um, you're completely free. There might be different um, levels, different timelines where this relationship still exists. And so we're going to see what spirit will bring out for that um, today. I've also included a lot more help in these readings. I don't want to just read for you and tell you a nice story when I know that you guys can can fix a lot of things yourselves, especially um, light workers out there. And I know you all have this gift in you. You can do a lot and you might not have even thought about the things you could do to change situations in your life. This is what Bob and I really want to do for you, that you can find a way to heal yourself on certain levels. You can start the process and I want want to really stress that. I want to really bring that to your attention in these readings here. I hope you enjoy them. And uh, for now, we want to go to our choices. I know. You're ready to go? Are you still hungry? Are you still hungry? Really? Did you tell everybody how much breakfast you had this morning? I know. And you had some naughty food too. You had a biscuit, didn't you? I know we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't have these sweets, but Bob and I sometimes can't resist them. So for now, let's go to our choices. Here we go. Welcome group number one, how to leave a toxic relationship, how to remove your energy completely from it. Let's get some information and see what's happening around you. What sort of a relationship are you in? Okay, with you, the toxic relationship also has something to do with divine timing. There's a certain time frame where you need to wait. There's something about you needing to um, release yourself at a specific time. So let's see. Let's see what this is all about. What is this divine timing all about? Yes, this divine timing coincides with your awakening. So that means some of you may have already left this relationship. Some of you may have decided, okay, this is it. I need to leave, but you couldn't fully get out of it because you hadn't perhaps fully awakened your, um, your soul, your gifts even. So what that means is that for some reason, this particular separation goes hand in hand with your awakening. And when you as a soul are ready to awaken, let's talk about this a little bit more because this will be slightly different for everybody because um, of what you've been going through with this particular person here. You already probably know who I'm talking about. But this toxic relationship 
is um, was very important to leave you. I feel some of you have left this relationship. You have already started on your own journey here. This is all about being playful, moving out there, doing your own thing. You've started. So let's see, why are we here? Why are we at this reading? What is this all about? Because if you've already separated and we're talking about leaving, so I would assume we're going to look at some more cards that this might be still existing somewhere in the etheric plane. In some of your timelines, you're still connected with this person. Let's check that out. Where are you connected with this particular person here? Um, first of all, the cards indicate that you think you've completely left it behind. So that's the first thing we want to talk about because you feel as though this is it. It's done. I've left it behind and I've done everything I can. I'm ready to accept my crown here of success, but the crown is still above you. It's not on you yet. You might still be waiting. You'll be thinking, oh, just a little while longer and then it'll be all okay. But maybe you're still connected here somewhere and you believe to be completely separate. And we need to dig deeper today. We need to dig into the etheric plane to see where the link is. Let's see. Let's look at some different cards and then I will also pull in a past life for you here. You can then in your own time release this past life. You can connect it. I will give you a general idea of the energy around it and then you will connect it to this person here that is affecting you. But let's learn a little bit more. Spirit wants to talk to this group a little bit further here. Okay, the reason why, because you've been asking why. Why am I not free from this person? Why is this person always coming back again? Well, they are like a shapeshifter. They come back on different levels. They come back when you don't even um, think about that them because all of a sudden they're like a lizard. They can blend into the background and then all of a sudden there they are again. So what's happening here is spirit wants you to be aware of that. Your spirit guides have come in at some point and they keep giving you messages. I'm going to tell you one of my messages here that I get and maybe you get the same thing. Um, on my computer screen, when it first opens up, there is a picture that looks very much like a place I used to live at. And I know it's connected to my ex-husband and I've tried to get rid of it. And most of the time it's not there anymore. But when something goes wrong with the computer and I have to reboot it, I have to start it again, um, all of a sudden this picture comes up. And I know he's back somewhere up there and I have to do some more clearing to get rid of him. These are the sort of things that spirit can make or use to make you aware of, hang on, this person is still hanging around. So pay particular attention to things that are happening in your everyday life to be aware that something might need to be done here. And the, um, the other thing is that this particular person keeps blocking your opportunities in life. They keep being in front of the opportunity and then you might not perceive the opportunity or you um, simply think that it's not meant for you or you're not good enough here. So we want to look into this a little bit further for you. Yes, we're going back to these cards again. Let's check this out. <clears throat> because you're in front of new beginnings here. You and a child, perhaps more children, family members, are at the very first level of these beautiful new beginnings. You might have had a few of those beginnings throughout your journey here, 
but this level is an advanced level this is where you perhaps get rid of this toxic person on many many levels so that they don't come back again what else is out there for us to tap into here in regards to this relationship here all right some of you are not releasing this person so there is an issue here. Let's learn a little bit more about the areas where you're not releasing this person. So what area is there where you're not releasing that person? Some of you here, these are old photos. When I pick up this card here, I see some old photos hanging around somewhere somewhere in your possession or nearby maybe even when you go to visit somebody they bring out these old photos let's say you go to your parents place and they keep holding on to your wedding photos to a toxic person and there they are right in front of you so maybe because you can't do anything about um, what other people have and the energy that they're keeping alive but you can do something about it energetically. So what we want to do when we are faced with this and when you know, hey, they're holding on to these photos or perhaps other possessions and you get in contact with them every now and then, you can set up a ritual. You can do this um, through either meditation I like to set up a cauldron. I have a witch's cauldron that is always set up and in the morning I will light a candle, open the cauldron and I will burn some incense and I would have already created a sacred space around this cauldron and I burn things. I write down information. Let's say I have somebody out there who has these photos well, I will take all power, all energy from that toxic person out of those photos. I will take it away and I will burn it in the cauldron. I will even imagine that these photos are burning. You can do that with any object. And then I will ask spirit to release me completely from this. I may, I may repeat this a few times depending on the energy. But that can be very, very helpful in getting rid of some of those things that are affecting us and we just don't know what to do to separate ourselves from it. That is one way of doing it. And don't be restricted to one way. You might have a specific way that you're doing it. You might go into meditation. You might have sacred prayers, you're saying. There, there are so many ways. It's our intention that is the most important thing as well as working with your spirit guides don't forget to talk to your guides to talk to higher beings to talk to your starseed families out there to call them in specifically and ask them to help you with things and after you have made that request and you felt like they were there with you during that time and and release you from it you will also need to express gratitude thanking them and releasing them as well from this healing you've just performed because you have you performed a ritual you performed a healing so you need to release them from it these sort of steps are very important in the effectiveness of our practices sometimes we can be so powerful and release things and forget simple things around us we forget to set up a sacred space to clear the air around us here to to clear the energy field that's perhaps around the cauldron even if you've had some visitors that came in you want to make sure you have that sacred space set up you're protecting yourself you're calling in your guides you're working with your higher self you're connecting with mother earth and then you're ready to go this might sound like a lot but this sort of practice can be done fairly quickly you don't have to spend hours doing this but you got to have an awareness and intention towards doing those things it's all about laying your foundations correctly when the foundations are solid your practices are solid foundations are weak your practices may also not be working so well 
Okay, now let's, let's, I could talk to you so long about this subject, there's so many more things coming in, but for today we want to focus on this toxic relationship and I do feel that we want to just tap in to a past life, um, something that you all can connect with and then put it in your own way. Let me just tune in and go along this different pathway here into the Akashic Records to give me an idea of the collective energy. There it is. I can see a big door in front of me and I know that I have to use the 10th key to open this door. Lots of Pleiadian energy around here in this um, life. Let's see what happened. A lot of you have have um, prayed or asked your particular starseed family here to help you because what I'm seeing is Pleiadian energy lots of them coming in and this is where you have to use your own intuition as to who you call in but what you have done is you've asked then you were confronted with a couple of choices here Two people came in. One was sent by your family. The other one was sent by darker energies. But the appeal was for the one that was sent by darker energies. Because straight away the appeal was here for the bad boy, the bad girl that um, you were drawn to, the broken soul that you wanted to help. You saw something there and you felt like, I can help, I need to help this person. And you were attracted to, uh, to I guess, that just the phrase, the bad boy or the bad girl here. There was an excitement about the prospect of being with somebody like that. And you you didn't think it through because what I'm seeing here, you really didn't think it uh, through. You just fell head over heels in love with this person and your Pleiadian family said, no, no, please don't do this. This is the person you need to be with. Give this relationship a go. You have not even really given this a go. You've sort of pushed that person aside and said, no, look at this one. I want that one. Well, later in life, you didn't say that uh, much anymore because it ended up in a very toxic relationship. So now we have the basis here. This is what I'm seeing. And I'm just going to close the door on that life and send it away because that is also what you want to do. You want to focus on the issue and the issue has been that you basically didn't listen to your guides in this timeline and you decided to go for this bad boy, bad girl. So you need to undo this. You need to visualize the same scene again. You are there confronted with the two choices, but now you're going to look deeper. Now you have an understanding that your life really fell apart when you married this, this toxic energy. Now you're going to go listen to your spirit guides, whoever they are, um, for your personal situation, and you're going to send the bad guy, the bad girl away. You are now ready to embrace a soulmate, true soulmate, loving connection that was put in front of you by your guides. When you have finished visualizing this and seeing this, this is the time when you walk back out from that timeline. You find that same door you walked into. You shut the door and you walk away from it. You can also see light waves coming over that. I often see different rays of light that move across that timeline and they wash it, they move things, they alter things. And then the ti this, this timeline takes on a different, a different emotional presence here. You're not feeling the same that you did before and you want to draw this new feeling, this new emotion into your field. So when this wave of light washes over things, you draw this into your field, you breathe it in, you 
take it into one of your chakras you place it into parts of your body that might be in pain maybe they will even be released from that pain those areas that are affected this is energy work this is healing work this is understanding higher levels of clearing your field of moving forwards because sometimes we think we need to um, follow a certain routine a certain ritual or we think we're stuck on a th on a 3d level and this could be completely linked to romance in your life or maybe it's linked to finances maybe it's linked to health I often see that when you tap into these different timelines and you remove them and not remove them we kind of have to adjust and not remove them we don't ever remove them we we put a different feeling a different energy a different structure which will benefit our current incarnation because now we have a different emotional feeling towards that relationship and an understanding that will help us in this incarnation i hope i could explain it to you so that this makes sense because it's so easy for me i just travel up there and i go open these doors and drag out these feelings and alter it all but i would like you to understand that particularly this group it's really coming out for you guys so you might want to play around with energy timeline work and always invite your guides they will be showing you the correct way of doing this and when you have finished always thank your guides you always express deep gratitude for the healing and make sure you release them from it so that they can then alter things and they can take this energy and move it even up to higher timelines so that um, you can experience uh, some relief from what's happening in your current life you sometimes need to give this time sometimes it can take i've seen one lady had everything change after one session she got very wealthy by the way so wow then another lady it took three years so it depends on you it just depends how this levels out um, where this has happened how far back it was how many dark entities were attached to it and so many more things out there that can be blocking things i often see very complicated structures so i hope explaining this to you gave you some understanding and was not too boring for you in a pick a card reading but i'm trying to change these readings up a little bit so that i'm not just telling you things oh this is happening and that's happening but i want you to heal yourselves i want you to take this responsibility fairly seriously because sometimes some of us think we can't do it this is not me i'm scared of it please don't be scared of it we are here to do this you've just got to find that door for yourself you've got to find that opening that uh, way of working with things that resonates with you i'm here to give you a little bit of a helping hand to show you a way of healing that was handed to me by my guides and that comes fairly natural to me but you might have other ways that you're practicing things that come fairly natural to you believe in yourself do not let others distract you this is the biggest thing i can advise you here this particular group believe in your practices believe in yourself because they are working even if circumstances don't immediately change but what you're clearing up on higher timelines on on in areas that you won't even recognize yet that is very important perhaps even when you leave this planet here you will then fully understand what you actually did while you were here while you were clearing on these higher timelines this is our mission on this planet this isn't an easy incarnation here on this planet not necessarily but we want to make it as enjoyable and easy for ourselves as we can and this comes through healing 
Group number one, I send you lots of love and blessings and wish you all the best here as you practice these things from Australia. Bye for now. Welcome group number two, toxic relationships, how to dissolve it, how to finally get rid of it, leave it, whatever you need to do. Okay, one thing is, um, if you're thinking you're not breaking free, you will. Look at that, that's such a happy, playful energy. And if you're in a toxic relationship, this would not be presenting itself. So there will come a point in your life here where you will be free completely. So let's learn a little bit more about this freedom. <laughs> Look at that. Our dreaded divine timing is coming in, guys. I know we don't want to see this, but it is divine timing. There's alignments that need to happen. What alignments? What else can we learn from this? Okay. All right. Okay, if you're still currently in a relationship that is toxic and you can't find your way out, you have to start uh, certain practices here in your life. And this means, as I touch this card, I see you creating a sacred space around you, a sanctuary that is yours, that nobody can touch. Because we can have people even verbally abusing us, but we, if we put this sacred environment around us and we set up blockages and we set the intention that whatever is being thrown at us will be returned to sender because you do not have to accept it and you're not doing a bad thing by sending it back. You're simply teaching whoever is doing this to you a lesson that whatever comes out from them that is directed at you and it's toxic and dark and hurtful you want to send it back to them and say no I don't tolerate that even though you may not say a word but energetically on the etheric plane you are setting this in motion you need to start something that keeps you in this sacred space in this bubble that does not mean you will not be hurt by those words because they are penetrating and they are they're there, you can hear them. But it doesn't mean that you have to linger in this feeling. This is the best way I can tell you to help yourselves if you are still in this situation. Because at first, this may not work very well for you because you'll be thinking, I'm so upset, I'm still crying. And look, that is okay. That is okay to feel like that. But you're continuously building up layers and layers and layers. These layers eventually will change something in your life because this person that is doing that to you will not be able to stand this new energy around you. While you feel weak and while you feel helpless, they have power and control. But once you start working on a different level here, a different timeline, on a different field, a different plane, you're building up something that has no choice but to enter into your current reality. It might take some time. Yes, we have seen divine timing here. So that's something that we have to consider. But the more you work on this, the faster also this will happen. Divine timing might be a waiting period for you to understand that you have powers. You are not alone. And even if you feel alone, you have powers. You have a light within. You need to awaken that again. And with this light, you can make a difference. So let's learn a little bit more about this toxic relationship here. Another thing that I would like you to do in this group here is when you go to bed you will have dreams. Your guides can help you in these dreams. I want you to talk to them, to ask your spiritual team of light 
to first of all protect you in those dreams, protect the dream itself, and to help you heal the situation, to separate yourself from this toxic environment. So that means that your prayers at the end of the day, or if you haven't got a routine of that, maybe you want to start some short prayers asking your guides, the universe to step in here to help protect your dreams, to protect you in those dreams and to alter the situation that is currently happening around you. This is important because you have powers. I always got to emphasize that sometimes we can feel just so weakened by our circumstances that we almost feel like I don't have these powers anymore. Start off with small rituals like this and your powers will return to you. It might take some time, but please don't give up. You can separate from this toxic relationship because you guys, you have a lot of pain in from your childhood. You have experienced a lot of issues here when you were a little child pain and this also is something that you can work on and you can protect that inner child of yours simply sit in a quiet place and view yourself as a newborn baby nurture yourself hold yourself in your arms and tell yourself what has been missing in your life what you always wanted to hear talk to yourself in the most loving nurturing way when you feel a certain age, let's say a certain age, something happened to you, travel back to that age. You don't have to experience that again. Just nurture yourself and really be with yourself at that time and comfort yourself and say to yourself, this is healed. Let's move on. Um, protect me from this environment that I've been in in that time. Allow my emotional body to heal. Whatever I need to do, maybe you need to have a few tears here so that you can really release some of this, but you need to find a platform of healing that will work for you and because this group here is um, you're very connected to angels as well a lot of um, angelic groups are around you so you can tap into that you can call on specific angels here that you want to work with and they can strengthen you during that time but see from your childhood this abuse has sort of spiraled into a toxic relationship and sometimes when we start healing the childhood the toxic relationship dissolves this is energy work, my friends. This is how you can empower yourself again. Keep going. Do not stop because I know you can do it. I know at this stage, some of you don't believe in yourselves, but you can. You can awaken the power again and sit with yourself. And I would also suggest to you, I mean, there is many meditations on inner child work. I don't want you to do them. I want you to play music, just soft, relaxing music in the background. I want you to connect yourself to your guides. Always protect your energy. See colors flowing around you, protecting you on deeper levels through your chakra system, down into Mother Earth. Ground your energy. Call in your higher self. Listen to the music, take in deep breaths, relax your mind, relax your body. Then go to those places where there was pain in your childhood. Then you do the nurturing, the comforting. You call in all your guides during those situations. You spend as little or as much time as you need in each um, perhaps section of your life, area of your life to really comfort that inner child. And you may have to return to it, but by nurturing that part of you, it will alter the relationship, that toxic environment you're in. You're now addressing it from the wounded part of the self, from that wounded inner child 
that is healing itself. Once the child heals itself, the adult will heal its, uh, him or herself here. So this is uh, energy work and I want to teach you more about that. I want to let you know that you are not this weak um, this weak person that has come to this planet to be tortured basically till you had nothing left, you can rise again just like the phoenix from those flames. You are going to start rising again because you need to from the ashes get there is a rebirth here for you because you are a very pure soul. So most of you have definitely married the wrong person here, toxic relationships, and you are the most purest, cleanest soul that needs to get back to that state. Because over the period of time that you've been with this toxic person, you've also taken on some of the heavy burdens of this person. You need to let go again. You need to be more playful again, but it might be difficult to feel like that when you're still in it. So in time, we've seen at the beginning of this reading that you basically had, um, uh, you had guarantee here. This card here is all about you becoming this playful person again. You don't have to worry. You will leave this. Maybe this, this confirmation itself can be very comforting to a soul. Simply knowing I will get out of this is something you can hold on to, cling on to. Then it depends on divine timing. We've seen that too. So that's when you tap into the clearing of your wounds and the altering, protecting your energy as well. Remember sending back any negativity that is put towards you. Return to sender is our idea here. Visualize a light bubble around you, but the outer layers of that bubble have a mirror-like surface, a reflection. And your intention is that only good energy penetrates through this mirror and reflects good energy on your soul, but any negative energy will be sent back. It has a vibration and this vibration of negativity, you don't allow it to penetrate. Let's read on. Let's check this out. What what else is there for you guys? What can be... Oh, straight away. Yes, there needs to be stress management for a lot of you guys because this is all about high stress levels. Let's see if we can get some idea. I can see that some of you um, going for longer walks can be very important. Some of you need to take up some kind of heavier exercise, some kind of sport, even if for some of you, it's even boxing. I'm seeing somebody punch this boxing bag and really letting out some pent up energy. Because if we are, and this, this, is, um, this is so conflicting because on one way you feel, you probably feel really low and no energy and you're sitting down and you're going, what, what do you want me to exercise? I can't do that. I just don't feel I have the energy. But that's exactly what needs to happen because you, the heaviness of the environment that is around you, that's what's burdening you down and it's what's making you tired. It's not that you're physically actually tired or your body is tired, but it's the energy. And once you start, let's say, punching this energy out, you will actually feel better. For some of you, this is just simply going for longer walks. For others, it is more extreme measures of letting this out. Maybe you have to find a place where you can simply, where you can simply scream. Even that, um, people have found that very, very um, relieving of all the stresses that have been placed onto them. But that's up to you. In my personal case, I tried that, but it didn't work so well for me. I could never really do it properly. But for me, I would be the person that would use the punching bag. And the walks, I like them too, but the punching bag really appeals to me. So whatever it is that helps you move and get this energy loosening up again around you wow there's cards there's cards everywhere so let's let's take all of these 
And one thing is a lot of you guys have lost the belief and the faith that this will ever change, that you will ever be completely free. Have faith because look at that. The second card is all about believing in yourself. So now you got confirmation. Remember the beginning of this reading. So you got confirmation here. You are a loved child of heaven. And you have spirit guides here that want to help you, that need you to basically awaken this belief system again, this spirit within whatever little flicker of light is left in there. Make it brighter. Open these doors again and believe in yourself here because peace is guaranteed to come back to your life. At one stage in this lifetime, you will find peace and love whatever love that is for some of you this will be this will be new relationships for others it might just be that you gather so much love for yourself that you're quite content with yourself for others it might be friendships you're receiving so much love from friends around you your spiritual team that you will free yourselves believe don't give up. And I hope I could be part of your journey for you to start activating this process again. I am sending you lots of love here from Australia. Bye for now. Welcome group number three. We want to talk about a toxic relationship and how to let go of this completely. Toxic relationships here. Okay, we need to take a very deep look at what's going on. So you might be the group that is very, it's very unusual here what we're going to find. So let's look deep into your situation and find out what's going on here. Okay, there's something to do with higher education. Wow, um, let's let's yeah, let's keep reading. I told you this will be a deeper look. What's this got to do with higher education? Oh, okay, okay, I'm understanding. Okay, there's an issue here, and it may be different, but this is basically the energy around it. You were meant to go into a field of um, healing. You were meant to do something in this incarnation that made you perhaps a very, very powerful healer, maybe an energetic healer, maybe healer of, an, of some other um, kind here. But what I'm seeing is that you didn't go that way. And that's why the toxic relationship happened in the first place. Oh, yes, giving me a headache too. Why? I want to find out so much more about you because this is intriguing. Why? So you got born, you started your life, and then Spirit made some kind of offering to you and said, okay, all right, what I'm seeing is that... Um, you had gifts perhaps from a very early age and you needed to explore those gifts. You needed to dig deeper into it. But perhaps you had never had anybody to tell you about these gifts. Nobody said that, hey, you can you know things about other people and this is what it means and this is how you can use it. And then maybe people even said to you, don't talk about this. No, you don't tap into that. And so you started thinking, no, I can't do this. So you shut it all down. And this is not your fault because there are um, external circumstances here, people that promoted this in your life. This may be a different form of higher education that wasn't based on spiritual knowledge, esoteric knowledge here, but more based on a 3D 
ego level i mean we do need that as well but for you for you the path was meant to be different you were meant to of course yes you were meant to learn you meant to be educated but not to the point where it took away from your spiritual side because then you lost your intuition in regards to these relationship what people are meant to come to you because now you put a different energy around you now you pursued a different life so your energy field naturally attracted somebody who was in harmony with your wounds with your way of being with what you were looking for so the combination of all three is usually what attracts the toxic people because we're not healed there we go there's some wound that attracts that we also are saying hey we we don't like um, to look into the um, esoteric field we'd rather go into a different form of education so by the way there is nothing wrong with these different paths but not for you not for this group because that is the baseline here for your life you will find the more you tap into spiritual knowledge understanding the the better your life is going to get the better your relationships are going to get the the uh, more other people will leave that are not in alignment with it and you will find yourself in a group of people that will be highly supportive of you your work and your gifts so let's read on a little bit more here wow yes <laughs> look at that wise decision here spirit is saying well that's a wise decision to go and now tap into that spiritual side and this is sometimes how deep we can go in um, what's been happening in our life because you might go to a reader and you get certain understandings about why you are struggling and in a certain situation but you want to look deeper you want to look past the initial thing and yes it might be the person's history but where did it start well it started all the way back with you where you made a different choice to what spirit had told you to do and yes granted this was not your fault for some of you you might have known it but it might have never been right for you there might have been many other dark forces that stopped you from doing that but it's not too late it's not too late you're here now you're hearing this you're having an understanding are you in front of a big decision right now do you need to go either this way in the spiritual field or do you need to go that way in a completely different area what decision are you going to make now this might be an awakening for you to understand that your current decision or perhaps a future decision will be so important for any future relationships because the attraction of who you become is really highly important for the rest of your life here in this incarnation and i can feel as i was saying that to you my energy was getting heavier and heavier so some of you are very bogged down in this let's get some more advice let's see some more advice for this group here okay yes look at that um there is an opening coming here the universe is going to send you lots of love and understanding and opening a revelation and maybe this reading is part of that revelation where you getting this understanding now of your future path so what else is happening here what else can we talk about to make this easier you also need to look at something in your life because there are choices that certain choices we make will either bring in higher levels of stress or it's a much easier way an easier path will never choose the higher levels of stress if you're in a situation and um, or you've made a choice that brings you these high levels of stress this is where a more wise decision needs to be made let's say for example that um, you get a certain amount of money 
and you decide well I got this big amount of money really I what I could do is I could buy myself a house somewhere um, maybe a simple structure and I could work in a different field that'll bring me in um, the money that I need but that's less stressful and now you've got the opposite decision here where you go okay this is a good down deposit for a million dollar mansion I'm going to move into that I'm going to build up this type of business high stress levels and this is what I want and then you might run into roadblocks you might be thinking oh my god this is so hard now I've got to do this this is breaking now I've got to fix this and you're going oh my god why why is this happening it's happening because spirit has maybe provided you with a certain amount of money to use it wisely and to lessen stress but you said no I have a different um, way of doing things I want it this way so the stress might be heightened a little bit don't panic if you've done this and you go oh my god this is my situation I have done this and this is where you still have a choice you can still build things up to a certain level but then make a choice make a decision for example if you need to fix something within the house that you've perhaps bought fix the house up build up this business structure but then in the future set the intention I want to simplify maybe at that stage some people are leaving you maybe you have kids maybe you have other people living with you and they're going to leave you and then you can do that maybe this stress at this time is a period of time where you need to just uh, work through it to get to the other side but when the future comes when that new decision comes this is when you've already got to put it in place now where you got to say to yourself well I'm not going to do this again I am going to simplify my life I'm going to enjoy my life I'm going to be more playful because the universe has given me this gift but I've decided now I want to build it a bit more but in the future it's different and this will attract better relationships this will sever toxic energies from past relationships because what I'm also hearing here for you guys is that you might have acted this way because you were in a relationship and there's two different scenarios here where your partner was very lazy so it was all up to you so you're working really hard to make this happen and your partner is just enjoying life and thinking yeah well this person can do it I'm just going to enjoy whatever I have here and the benefits I get from being with this person and it's driven you crazy you're going oh my god why isn't he or she doing anything and I'm doing everything so you have that toxic environment still within you you're taking it with you to your next choice to your next um, part of your life here so you want to break that you don't have to be the person that has to do it all you can have fun you can relax maybe yes some of you are still in circumstances where this is a bit delayed but please don't worry about it the other situation could be that you are you have been with a partner who was like that who always said we need to go and do this and do that and things collapsed and you said oh my god I just want to live a peaceful life what are you doing I don't want to be in this structure I just want to live a simple life and they've been saying no you don't need to do this you need to now strive for higher things and you're going yes I understand we want to get a little bit um, perhaps wealthier here but I just don't want it I just want to be different so once again you might have taken this old structure into your new life and thought well now that I might be or I've divorced this person this relationship now is behind me but maybe I should still do this I might put a bit more stress on myself so that um, I can achieve it now and I can show them I can do it by myself you don't need to do any of this you guys your relationships your future relationships depends on these wise decisions you're making for yourself stress should not be on high levels in your life it's not good for this group 
So, I hope, I hope I um, made this clear, as clear as I could for you what's happening. But we want to read on further. We want to find out more about um, what's happening in your life, how to let go of these toxic relationships. Yes, you've got lots of guardian angels around you and they're very childlike. They want you to be like that. I think your spirit guides are going to bombard you with this energy. They're going to find ways to make you laugh, to make you happy, to be more childlike, to not care so much about things because the universe is going to back you up when you let go because you're like this at the moment. I've got to do this. But when you do that and you just say, no, I'm going to allow my guides to show me the way I will do this. I will follow whatever I intuitively know I should be doing, not holding on to everything like this and knowing that this might destroy me, but thinking, oh, at least everybody else might be all right. Guess what? If you say that, if you say, I want to make sure that everyone else is all right, but I don't care about myself. That's when everybody else around you will fall apart with you. Because when we care for ourselves and we center the energy towards us first, you come first. If your vessel is not um, healthy in, in, on every level here, physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, whatever other levels there are, if you don't care for yourself and look we don't have to be perfect at it because i fully relate to this i'm like oh my kids need to be all right but i don't i don't mind whatever happens here and i had to change my way of thinking as well because the kids literally they were falling apart till i said no hang on i'm going to care for myself and then they started picking up i thought oh my god this really works so that's you that's what i want you to remember because this is how you can heal your life. And I said this in one of the other readings. I want to make the pick a cards a little bit different. I want you really to understand patterns in your life. I don't want you just to listen and hear something nice for your future when it may not come because you didn't understand something. I want to tell you what you can do, how you can fix your life, what you can focus on. And I guarantee if you apply it in this way, your life will change, take on greater meaning. Let's go. You need to be more childlike. Yes. So that is our last thing here that spirit wanted to tell you as far as, um, as moving forwards in, in a positive way. Childlike attitudes can bring in so much joy, they're telling me. So let's move on. Okay, please forgive yourself for any anything that you perceive you've done that you feel that has been wrong because your spirit guides, the universe, God, they've already forgiven you. They're already gone. They're saying, well, that doesn't even exist anymore. Why are you dragging this back up? Why are you worried about it? We've already let this go. But if you want to hold on to it, hang on. Yeah, OK, it's it's on you, but we don't care. It's it's done. Forgive yourself. If there's an issue where you haven't done this, please just let go. Forgiving is important. Another thing that can be very helpful is some music. If you're going and listening to music, for some of you, this is classical music that I'm hearing. Um, it might be different for others, but there's a big feel about classical music. There's even opera coming in, and I'm not promoting any of these specific ways of um, relaxing with this type of music. But um, if that is you, this is really, really good. If you're listening to this, it opens your energy field. If uh, It opens your spirit. And this might just be for some. Let's see if there's anything else here. No, I don't feel anything else for this group. I feel very connected to you guys. I understand where you're at and how you feel and what you might have even been through. But for you, I know there'll be big changes coming in for some of you in the very near future here. There's an energy at the moment. This is happening 
um, everywhere for, for the next probably three to five years. Energetically, what's going on is the universe is separating energies. So if you, let's say, let's put it very simple here. Let's say you, there is a darker soul group. Well, the universe is sort of separating that group from the other more advanced groups, light beings at various stages, various levels here. So that the light beings can start grouping together and bringing in light to this planet on a much greater scale. And those that are at different stages can move towards that light and enlighten themselves, empower themselves a lot more. Because there's been a lot of activities as far as the darker energies are concerned. The darker, um, even the darker entities have become very powerful because they keep attaching themselves to light beings. Well, what's happening with these light beings is they're being distracted from their work and they can't shine. They're being basically restricted. But once these darker energies are moved to the side and the light beings are starting to awaken on a deeper level, this is when the planet's energy will change even more. Some have asked me, well, why not that be the same for the darker energies that are grouping together at the same time? But the message I got in regards to that is that these darker energies, they they will get slightly more powerful, but they've already reached such a level of darkness that even though they can build on certain structures and group together, they will never be as expansive in their power as the light beings will be. Once the light workers get together and free themselves from the density and complexity of what this system brings to us, this and people around us, this will then help us expand on such a great level that the light will be so bright that the darkness will find it harder to penetrate. Yes, there will be conflicts and wars and different things going on, but we will finally be ascending on a greater level. I hope this makes sense to you. This has been given to me only probably a couple of days ago. This came in. It came in through a reading I did for somebody and um, it really showed what is happening out there, what the universe is planning, what the different um, galactic groups out there want to achieve, where the universe really wants to step in, clear up some of this energy that is present here and help us all to reach higher levels of ascension. All the best to you guys. Lots of love from Australia. Bye for now.